So to finish off our examples, we're going to have a work problem where basically what we're going to be doing is seeing all of our stuff. So we're going to use our quadratic formula. So I'm just going to write that down. x equals negative b plus or minus a square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Absolutely, I will make sure that that is ingrained in your heads, and that might be the only thing you remember from pre-cal 20, but it's a catchy tune. All right, so basically, we can see one potential use of the quadratic formula with this example. And you have a word problem on your assignment as well, so it helps tie your stuff in. So the surface area of a cylinder is 250 centimeters squared. The height of the cylinder is seven centimeters. What is the radius of the cylinder to the nearest hundredth of a centimeter? So a lot of the things that I'm going to be emphasizing in this question is being able to use your calculator smartly. Yes, I know that that is not very good grammar, but at the same time, you need to be able to use your calculator in a very smart way. The surface area of a cylinder is written as a formula 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. Goes back to grade h. Now we have a few few bits of information that we can actually fill in. It says the surface area is 250. So our surface area is 250. We don't know what the radius is that's actually what the question is saying is what is the radius of the cylinder to the nearest hundredth of a centimeter? 2 pi r and it says that our height is 7. In order for us to use the quadratic formula we need to have one side equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 250 over. At the same time that I'm going to do that I'm going to make my life a little bit easier and simplify a few things. Well, actually, only one thing. But 2 times pi times the radius squared. Plus, if we were to take this 7 and multiply it by 2 pi, it would actually be 14 pi. 2 pi times 7 is 14 pi. Subtract 250. Now, what we have is we actually have our equation in standard form. You might not see it, but it is there. The 2 pi is a number. It's about 6.28. But pi is an irrational number. It's 3.14156535897932246264, so on and so forth. So it's a number, which means that that's actually A. Why am I saying that A? That's A. Because we have the r squared. In other words, it's like our x squared. 14 pi is the b value. Since r squared is x squared, r would just be x. Our 250 is our c value. Sorry, the negative 250 be very specific with that. So when we plug it into the quadratic formula, x, or in this case, we're not solving for x, we're solving for r. r is negative b, so b is 14 pi. So negative 14 pi plus or minus the square root 14 pi squared Subtracting 4 times our a value, which is 2 pi, times by our c, which is negative 250, all over 2a. 2 times 2 pi. Now, there's a whole bunch of ways to do this. I'm going to try and do it the easiest way possible. 
And really, what you can do is you can plug all this into your calculator. You just have to be careful that what you type into your calculator, 14 pi plus the square root, 14 pi squared, subtracting 4 times 2 pi times negative 250, all over 2 times 2 pi. When you type this into your calculator, you have to get the answer for the numerator and divide it by all over 2a. You have to divide by the entire 2 times 2 pi. So if you type this into your calculator, we're going to actually get the answer. Now, the only reason that I'm doing it here is because, yeah, our numbers are going to be a little bit funky. Oh, I just forgot to put the bracket on that 2 pi to end that. And then we have to remember that it's plus or minus a square root. So we have the plus there. So then we have negative 14 subtracting a square root of 14 pi. Square subtracting 4 times 2 pi times negative 250 all over 2a. So when you type this into your calculator, just type it all in. So if I were to type this in with the right amount of brackets, negative 14 pi plus second square root, make sure I square my 14 pi, Again, when I type into my calculator, I get the answer to the numerator as one thing first. I press equals, and then I divide it by a 2 times 2 pi. Or if you want to type it in, it will just be 4 pi. So you type that in to hundredths. It'd be 3.71. If we type in negative 14 pi subtract. So since I have the x2s, I can go straight up into my calculator and I can just change that plus 2 subtraction. So, and then when I divide by 2 times 2 pi, which is 4 pi, get negative 10.71. So the entire purpose of this question is to start getting you to think about what is the context of this question. This question is asking what is the radius of this cylinder? So the radius, give you three seconds to see what's wrong with this question. If you said you can't have a negative radius, you are correct. The radius cannot be negative 10.71, in this case, to be centimeters. But if you were to type into your calculator, 2 times pi times 3.71 squared plus 2 times pi times 3.1 times 7, you will get dang close to 250. So, you know, the entire purpose of this question is just to start make, getting you to think critically of what is this question asking. And it's asking for the radius. Now, that's all that I need you to remember and do. So you can keep on working on your assignment. If you would like to keep the video going and you would like to see some algebra done here for completing the square on a standard form, you're welcome to do that. If you want to stop the recording right now and just keep on working, that's fine. So if you want to stop it, 
great. This is not something that's going to be on a test or anything. It's just a, well, I'll say it's something fun to do. All right. So we're still here. Completing the square, which means I'm going to have to factor out the a value from the x squared and the x term. Now I'm going to put my work a little bit over to the left. So I factor the a out. I'd be left with an x squared plus b over ax. Now I have to find out what is half of b over a. So that would be the same as b over a times one half, which is b over 2a. And then I need to square it. What is b over 2a squared? Well, it would be a b squared over 4a squared. Add and subtract that. Then we factor, factor these first three terms. So this would become an x plus b over 2a squared, subtracting a b squared over 4a squared. Plus c equals 0. Then we distribute the a in. So we have a x add b over 2a squared. a times b squared over 4a squared would actually be a b squared over 4a, because what would happen is that the a's would actually cancel off. One would cancel off there, and one would cancel off there. Then I would need to get a common denominator here in order to add it. So a, so that would actually be b squared over 4 a, uh, up there, plus b over 2a. To get a common denominator for 4a, I need to multiply this one by a 4a over 4a. So I get a 4ac over 4a. And now that these are the same, I could well, equal 0. I'd have a x plus b over 2a squared. Since it's a common denominator, I just have to subtract. So this is a little bit of a little bit of some cheating. And by cheating I mean using fractions to my advantage. That would be the square completed. So then the final bit would be, what about if I want to solve this? Which basically means I want to get the x by itself. So my next step would be to add and subtract this over. So since this is a... No. Long story short, we need to get over all of this. In order to get over all of that, I'd have to add a b squared and subtract a 4 times a times c. So that would actually be a b squared subtracting 4 a c and a b all over 4 a. Plus b over 2 a squared. So and then the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that a in front. So I'm going to divide by an a. Dividing by an a, which means multiplying by the reciprocal. So this would actually be 
v squared, subtracting 4ac, all over a4a squared. Then it would equal bx plus b over 2a squared. Now we're going to take the square root. When we take the square root, we take the square root of the top and take the square root of the bottom. The square root of the top, b squared, subtracting 4ac. Square root of the bottom, square root of 4a squared would be a 2a. But we took the square root, which means that we have to take the positive and the negative of it. Plus b over 2a. And last but not least, we'd have to subtract a b over 2a from both sides. So if I subtract a b over 2a, I'm actually going to put that out in the front. Since our denominators are the same, a would be all over a 2a. If I subtract a b, I'd have a negative b. Plus or minus square root of b squared subtract 4ac. So if you're still here, what we've done is we've actually just used algebra and completed the square, solved it, and long story short, this is how the quadratic formula was made. By following those steps for completing the square and solving it, what, allows it, what it will allow us to do is solve any quadratic as long as it's in standard form. So, some of you might think it's cool. Some of you might think it's excessive. I think it's fun. Okay. Now have fun.